hey guys what's up it's duchess braids here and welcome back to my channel so today i have my sister shauna and i'm gonna be installing a wig on her head i just washed her hair and i'm gonna be putting some paul mitchell's heat protectant in it before i blow it out and get started the hair that i'm using today i'm super excited about i know you guys have seen it and been wondering like I've been wondering like how it looks, how it works. The hair is from Love Me Hair and I love working with this brand because they do send super quality lace. The hair is already pre-bleached and pre-plucked. They also send some goodies with the package. Um, in this package, I got some lashes with a spoolie. They did send me some earrings, not some earrings, <laughs> and a clip. So this clip is gonna help me during the install. But let's get to the hair, guys. Well, before the hair, they did send also a user guide to show you how to wash and take care of the hair and how to do your returns and refunds. The hair did come with a band. The band is not norm like added like normally. It did come in a little packaging like that. And if you want to use it, you use it. Let's get to the hair. I know you guys have seen these 4C baby hairs on these wigs and it just to me like y'all already know i already told you guys i'm in the phase where i want to go more us like our natural features and i just think this is a great touch because there's people like me out there that don't have baby hairs that lay down and sometimes if you're gonna throw on a wig i kind of want it to look like me ish so i feel like the new baby hair trends of it being your natural baby hair is just something super cool and neat and it's just starting to represent us more instead of trying to be more of the european features and stuff like that so let's get into this i'm gonna be doing also like an updated install because i do feel like some things have changed since my last ultimate melt installation so for her hair as you can tell her edges were thinning they Trust me guys, it's been three months and I've been throwing some Jamaican black castor oil in her hair and her edges has fully grown in. So I'm going to be taking as much precaution as I can to ensure that we do not damage her hair with any type of tension. So what I did was I started braiding her braids way back further than her edges just so that I'm not pulling. The braids are not tight. She, as she made sure to make that comment when I was done that she loves how there was no tension on her hair with my braids. And because her edges are growing in and she just wanted a wig. So I'm trying to take care of her and her edges. We're not trying to like damage them anymore because I love the progress, the oil has been working. So I'm braiding the hair back. Her hair is fine. So I don't have to put that many hair. And for me, if you have fine hair and because I attached the wig by sewing it down, I add some extensions in so that it makes the braid much stronger. That's what I'm doing now is just adding extensions in on the side. I didn't add the extensions in in every single braid. I just kind of threw the braids back because those braids are not going to be affected. Now I'm going to be using some uh, skin protectors. The bottle I'm using right now is just to protect her skin from the glue. And I'm spraying it. As you can tell, she has sensitive skin. So I'm spraying as much as I can. I just want to protect her hairline, her skin, and her edges. So I blow it in and now I'm going to be using the got to be glue and just slicking her hair back. I'm not going to be using any spray today because again, I just feel like the spray is a little bit overkill and we're trying to protect her edges and her hairline. So we're not going to be using any got to be glue spray, just the gel to get her hair out the way. And then I'm going to be throwing on, once that is dry, I'm going to be throwing on the stocking cap. So here's the Jamaican black castor oil that I put in her hair. Um, I'm gonna line her hair with that. And I love to just do that because sometimes they wear the wigs for a long time and I just want their scalp to be moisturized under it. And this does help with moisturizing the scalp. All right, I'm putting some more skin protectant on her skin before adding on the uh, cap. And I just pull the cap down. I'm gonna cut her ears out, but I'm not gonna cut the eyes out because I want the cap to be as stretched as possible. And I feel like once you cut the eyes out, then it's just 
revert back in so I'm going straight in instead of using any got to be glued spray I'm going straight in with the bold hold blue and I find that this blue really worked well with her hair and her hairline I'm using some glue and I'm going straight in on the cap and I'm making sure that the reason why I didn't color her cap before I put the glue on is because I'm making sure that I can see her hairline where her hairline starts and I'm doing it right above her hairline so that I do not affect her hairline at all with this glue then I'm gonna wait for it to dry once it dries then I'm going to go in and sew the cap down and as you can see I still do the same loop-in effect that I taught you guys in my previous videos basically you want to loop over the braid and go in between the two um, thread and to make a knot so I'm going over loop in between the two thread and then I'm making like a knot and while I'm going you're gonna see that there's like a little under stitch under the braid so that is how I loop it so that the stitching or the cap is held in place so once i'm done um sewing around the glue is dry so i'm gonna go in with ruby kisses and i normally color match with the skin before i put it on the scalp so i want to make sure like it matches the color of her face and just put a tad bit on the face just to see if the color matches then i go in on her scalp and her hairline with the uh, ruby kisses whatever color i feel like is best and i um do it just like that once I have that, I'm going to go in with the scissors and the glue should be dry. It has had some time to dry, so I'm going in. I'm going to cut around her hairline um, and get rid of the excess lace. And I find that this method is a little bit better for me as far as just going straight in with the glue instead of using the got to be glue because I just feel like as I'm going the when I use the got to be glue spray as I'm going I feel like it's lifting and I just feel like the glue doesn't lift so I put the wig on her head and now I'm gonna be adding some more glue and I add about uh two more layers to it i didn't have any um of the the right tool to spread the glue so i just reached for my crochet tool sometimes you don't have the right tool you just gotta grab i didn't want to waste time looking for it and the glue dry in her head so i just grabbed the closest thing that would work and it was a crochet needle so i used use the back of that to just spread the glue out and to get it right So I'm using the bold hold glue and this is my first time using this glue I thought I was using it but I was using the ghost bond and the bold hold old glue dries very quickly so I wasn't used to it drying so fast and I, I just wasn't used to this glue I do like how it works however I just needed like you know if you're not used to something you're just like it's drying so fast and you never I didn't know if it was gonna stick to the hair properly so the glue is dry now I'm gonna bring the hair and you guys see that natural baby hair so it could look a little weird at first just because we're not used to it but just think about it there is like people out there myself included that just don't have baby hairs that is ooh, lays down it just does what it wants to do and sometimes there is we just need to embrace that and I feel like this wig is allowing us to embrace our natural hair and how it just works. 
so I'm brushing the brushing it back um, to match in with her scalp and you guys already know like I like my wigs to match her hairline so I did end up cutting off a lot of the baby hair more than I wanted to but I just needed the wig to match her hairline because that's just how I install my wigs however I do have some in the finale to show you guys how the hairline looks once it's like wet and melted and styled The one thing about their wig also is that it does come pre-plucked, so I did not have to do a lot of plucking. As you guys can see in this part of the video, it's already pre-plucked, and there goes the baby hair left out, and I'm just going to spray some water on it. I'm not going to do too much styling on this wig. I pulled out the baby hair, and I'm just going to um, cut some, because I did cut off of the lace where her hairline was, so I had to like kind of make the sideburns, but... It looks so good once it's completed. I'm framing the hair to her face and I'm gonna be spraying it with some water, put some um, mousse on it, and then you're gonna see the final look. Again, this is the realistic Afro kinky hair with 4C edges representation matters you guys and these brands are starting to make a change and they're starting to represent us and our natural hair and i do feel like if you don't have natural hair and you want to wear a wig i feel like why not wear a wig that represents your natural features and your natural your culture and this is how they are doing it it's clearly going in a wave of ourselves. this is the finished look you guys the hair looks so pretty it does look like her hair look at those baby hairs not slicked down that like we're used to just puffed out and curly like most of us have naturally and yeah this is how it looks the uh all the information that you guys need will be in the description bar for this hair if you guys love it love this look go ahead go in the description and check it out thank you guys so much for watching again see you next time